Hi, this is David Terry at the Terry Law Firm, and today we're going to talk about bed rails at nursing homes. Many of the people that I talk to are concerned that the nursing home where their loved one lives is refusing to have the bed rails on the bed. I understand that position, and I have had so many conversations with people about this, but I also want to explain how a nursing home goes through the process of determining whether bed rails can be used. So first and foremost, federal law states that nursing homes are required to meet the needs of each resident in the nursing home. They are required to meet each resident's needs. Required does not mean to just do their best or do what's within the budget or to give it the old college try. Required means required. Bed rails are considered a restraint and can often be very dangerous for a resident. Residents can be tangled up in the bed rails and end up breaking bones or can actually be asphyxiated by the bed rails. So to avoid this danger, a nursing home is required to do an assessment on each resident to determine whether it is safe to use bed rails. There's two primary reasons for bed rails. First, to assist residents in repositioning themselves within the bed and second, to prevent falls out of the bed. The nursing home must do an assessment to determine whether the resident can understand why bed rails are on the bed in the first place. If the resident has no cognitive impairment and can understand how to use the bed rails and why the bed rails are there, then the nursing home is much more likely to permit the bed rails to stay on the bed. But if the resident is cognitively impaired and does not have the understanding on how to use the bed rails to reposition themselves in bed, then a nursing home is simply not going to use the bed rails. The dangers to the resident in that case simply far outweigh the benefits. If for any reason the nursing home determines that the resident is a fall risk and they choose not to put bed rails on the bed, then they have to provide other options to eliminate or at least reduce the risk of falls out of bed and also to reduce the possibility of injury in the event a fall occurs. The easiest and most common options are one, to ensure that the resident is properly supervised by staff members, two, to lower the bed as low as possible, and three, to have a padded mat next to the bed. If a resident happens to fall out of bed while the bed is at its lowest point and lands on a padded mat, the chance of the resident being injured are substantially less than if this was not done. Where nursing homes get into trouble is when they don't have enough staff members on duty to properly supervise residents, or they don't do the assessment at all, or they decide that the bed rails are not suitable for a particular resident, but then don't take any other fall precautions. If you have had a loved one who's been injured in a fall at a nursing home, you can certainly learn more about falls on our website, terrylawoffice.com, or feel free to call our office at 314-878-9797 and talk to me directly.